So, hello guys, and welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to present to you this monstrosity, or rather one of these machines. Actually, this one is because it's out of four, which I would like to call uh, absolute autosave detectors. Yes, indeed. Um, this is very related to my last video, so actually I should probably turn this off. Oh, uh, no, my bad. I have to do it up here, actually. There we go. Uh, yeah, we'll get into that in a second, all those messages and all the flying machines will be for the next video, maybe, I don't know. We'll see, but I've been doing a lot of research, well, relative lot of research while I was on vacation. Um, and as a result, I have this machine to show and many others, but first let's get into the background. Uh, last week I showed you these machines. Uh, these were not that important this video, but this one is. Basically, uh, this is a bad uh, auto save detector, I would say. Back then I called it the chunk reset detector, but considering I also used that term uh, relating to chunk corruption, which we then reset the chunk back in August 2014, almost a year ago, that's actually time kind of flies, I guess. Um, I thought it would be better to use a different name, uh, and also Rayworks has been using the name uh, autosave because he has also been looking into machines concerning these, apparently. And yeah, that's basically. He, t he figured out that that's actually what it is, it just every 45 seconds um, the game decides to, well, lo re auto automatically save a part of the world and also throw away parts of the world which it don't, doesn't think are relevant anymore, aka unknown in chunks. Um, but anyway, this is a machine I showed last week to show how to, uh, to detect that, basically you just have two clutch rocks in different chunks, uh, you, comp you put all the both signals into the same line and if the line turns on for a bit too long, then the repeat, uh, competitor will turn on and it will reset the whole system. So, let, anyway, let's quickly show this thing in action, this junk. Um, so, yeah. I think yeah, if we have the first real signal. The first signal allows bulls... But, okay, I shouldn't maybe still say that in the video, but it's kind of nonsense. Sorry, people, but this is second take, so my... Uh, yeah, I guess my comments aren't that great. Anyway, um, but the first... First thing is always nonsense because uh, you cause a chunk border and basically you unload the machine. So yeah, but from there on we get uh, sixty thousand seven hundred seven, uh, eighteen thousand and one tick later it seems. No, sorry, eighteen hundred one tick, then eighteen hundred and two ticks. Yes, it seems so. And then it and then it alternates back again between eight and ten. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of. Uh, inconsistent and well, it's not just kind of, it's really inconsistent. Anyway, um, the, my explanation for this is simply that basically, when you reset the machine, this thing is not fine tuned whatsoever and it seems to only detect one out of two of these things. So it looks like it only, yeah, uh, you have to initialize it in the right phase in order to get detected these thing. Uh, and as a result, I guess uh, the machine just needs to, well, basically. When it detects the desync, it will reset itself, but into a different phase. And as a result, because it only detects the desync in some phase, it will, um, well, take a bit longer before it detect the desync again, and then it will reset itself, but in a different again, it will again add two ticks to its phase, but because the period is four ticks, it will go back to its initial phase basically. So that's that. Uh, this machine basically sucks because yeah, you get different results. It's also it's huge. Uh, if you look at what it does, there are tons of veteran lines just laying around, really. So I decided I would compact that and also make it a bit more uh, practical, or at least more, um, yeah, precise. Basically, uh, I want to use this for some testing. I want to check uh, what I, what I can basically do, well, like with what delays compared to the autosave. Then that, of course, I can't really do proper research concerning that if I get an inconsistent results out of my the, uh, machine. I need to get the results exactly every 45 seconds and they cannot depend on the initialization phase of the machine. Therefore, I decided to make this thing. So yeah, basically over here we just have... Actually, the machine works in a fairly simple manner. Again, you just use pairs of clocks, but this time you use four pairs. Uh, four, well, because there are four different periods and I thought, well... Uh, it's sorry, the period of the whole of the thing of there. Of, the period of one of these compared clocks is four ticks, four game ticks. Uh, so I thought, let's just use four... Uh, clocks in different phases to detect stuff. Anyway, um, over here we have one pair of clocks, as you can tell, way more compact than the last version. These blocks indicate a chunk border, as you can tell. 
over here you have different chunks um so yeah basically let's turn it on to show for a bit um so yeah first of all let's take a look at one oh no that's not what i wanted actually let's first take a look at one of these machines as you can tell every uh, let's turn the interface on every tick uh, so every second for you guys uh one of the uh, competitor clocks turns on and one of them turns off as it should so basically all of them are one uh game tick off and something you may also be able to tell is that if you look if if you compare all these machines the corresponding clocks are all one tick off basically so if you look yeah you can kind of see at the bottom like basically this wave going through so this on 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 so yeah basically like that so all of these so basically within these within one of these machines you actually have um four clocks out of sync and every i also have four of these machines which are all one tick out of sync as well um out of phase or whatever you want to say uh the way this works is because of this mach machine mechanism right here and uh, bear in mind though that only one of these machines is actually uh just uh, well basically you only need one of these to detect to have an, your uh, absolute autosave detector uh, you need to use four though to prove a point to you that it actually is absolute uh, which i'll do in a second so first of all let's quickly deactivate this uh, and now we're going to activate it with tick speed one and to basically show you that uh, why it just does that in one tick of sync. So yeah, basically as you can tell, every tick or every second rather, uh, one of those lines turns off and I should probably just do this in 20 game ticks per second. Um, 20, there we go. So yeah, basically they turn off in, uh, one tick after another, they all turn off because of the same mechanism. So I assume that means that all machines afterwards behave in the exact same way, one tick after another. So yeah, uh, also that seems to be the result, luckily, f for once Minecraft is kind of consistent, so... Though it did, it did take me a long time to figure this out, because I don't know, but... There's been a lot of discussion concerning these precise timings lately, and... Neither Selens or Sankarn seem to be entirely right. Sharir and Marin are onto stuff, but I kind of too lazy to watch all the videos. So yeah, just, it took a bit of time to figure this out, but luckily it seems to work. Uh, unless there are, like, big rendering issues, but I doubt that's the case right here. Anyway! With all that out of the way, let's actually show these machines in action, finally, 7 minutes 30 in. Um, so yeah, 500 ticks, let's go. So yeah, as you can tell, all of the machines triggered at the exam exact same point, so that's already a very good start. Which means that regardless of what phase you initialized in, it gives you the same result, because the machine has 4 clocks with a period of 4, all of them are run out of sync. Uh, anyway, so the entire machine has a period of four, therefore, uh, four ticks, therefore, if you use four different machines in four different phases, you basically have all the phases. Um, so yeah, basically, you cannot really mess that up with initialization. Initial, initialization. Um, and also, it gives you precise results every 900 ticks, no, not one every 1800 or whatever. Just every night and not when the actual autosave happens. So it detects every autosave and that kind of stuff. So that's pretty cool. Um, but the only strange thing here, one of the only strange things here is that, as you may notice, the results seem to happen in a random order. Um, or at least quite random. I don't know what to think about it. To me, it seems kind of random. I'm not sure, I haven't really checked, but. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. You would think that Minecraft processes all of those threads on updates in like. I don't know, like XYZ order or something, but it, it doesn't, I guess. Or it does something else, which is kind of tricky, but I don't know what this is about. Maybe this would make a funny randomizer, but at least this machine seems to work for all kinds of purposes. So if you need to do some research and you want to make and um, check whether or not stuff basically holds up, whether to uh, chunk uh, to uh, the autosave, then you can use this machine. We were though that of course you would then you would have to test nine hundred different phases if you want to make sure that your machine can hold up against other saves. Um which is kind of a lot <laughs> of things to test. If if every test takes ten seconds then you're still busy for two to three hours. So yeah. Make sure to use automated tests, that's kind of important. Uh and even then it can still take a long time. So anyway, with that out of the way, uh I think that's kind of it. Oh no, that's the one thing I have to show in this video because if all this made sense, then uh, it wouldn't be Minecraft, would it? So let's quickly delete those lines right here and show you that this thing is weird. Well, I, I kind of have an explanation for it, but I'm not entirely sure. It's not that important in my opinion. Oh, I should 
first activate the lever and then do that. So yeah, as you could tell, we kind of disabled uh, one pair of clocks on everything. And as a result, right here, you have one machine which is out of, uh, which is not giving the right results. However, let's wait for a bit and see. And as you can tell right here, uh, the blue machine gives the right result again. And it will actually continue to do that. So that's kind of a strange thing. Now, I tested all clocks, but um, this, if you disable this pair of clocks, uh, at the top left, which of course, I don't think that's much to do with the top left. I tested this thing, you can rotate it, it seems to work fine. Uh, I haven't done mirroring and stuff, but basically I, I think it has to do with the delay to it. I guess there's again this characteristic delay uh, to resetting this machine, and as a result, um, basically that clock is kind of useless because I guess whenever it gets re it resets itself, it resets itself in such a phase where um, the, one of the other clocks will detect it, but that wouldn't really explain why one clock wouldn't be enough after you've detected it, so I don't know. It's kind of weird, but mapping doesn't matter that much because really, like, uh, oh, let's turn it off. The thing is that, um, like, you can kind of remove this now, yay, but your machine is still, like, using the red typical redstone standards of how you count volume, which is just, like, you take the outer pieces and you just use that as a volume. Um, it doesn't really get any smaller if you take out this last pair of clocks. Um, it also is, it doesn't really take that much more redstone, I would say. You probably wouldn't need uh, more than a couple of these on your server. Like, just maybe for some technical stuff, you would want to have one to uh, synchronize your timing. But um, yeah, generally, it doesn't really matter too much. So yeah, I would just keep this one in to be honest. I'm gonna keep it in from my research. I think it's more consistent, it's easier, you have that first result, it's right, right away basically. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I like it more. Anyway, I think that's gonna be it for this video. Of course, there will be a, um, well, thing in the description, I guess, uh, a schematic in the description for uh, to download one of these machines. Um, and actually, you know what, while I'm at it, I'll also give you the entire setup like with these chunks but that will be a bit bigger so i'll give you two schematics one for the individual autosave absolute autosave detector which is quite useful for research i would think and just one for the entire that's set up using four uh one out of take out of phase um absolute autosave detectors which you can use to verify my test results i suppose and saves you a bit of time figuring this part out um yeah you know what actually i'll just give you guys this part like you can do the wiring yourself. It's this part isn't that complicated. Anyway, uh, this video is getting long, so thanks for watching, people. I hope you liked it. Even if you didn't, be rating, and I hope I will see you in another video.